Hey, Roger here with Steampunk.Nemesis Gear, and welcome back to another Hey, Watch Me Work video. Uh, got a order today for one of my new wand holsters, and uh, so we're going to make this. Uh, I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking. I'm just going to let you kind of watch the process start to finish of how I make my wand holsters. Okay, so I usually save, uh, I have lots of um, belts and stuff that I make, so I always save the scrap strapping for that. Uh, and it's perfect for this. I've got my pattern pieces. Um, it's a pretty simple pattern. And what I'm going to do is just start by grabbing some tools and we're going to get this piece, the back piece cut out and get those marked. Okay, that's ready for its stamping and shaping. And let's see, this is uh, this is an eight nine uh, ounce leather here, uh, for the backing for you know that's going to go on the belt. Um, and then for the retention loop piece, um, I'm using a five ounce leather here. Um, it's going to be a lot thinner. It's going to be easier to shape for that really steep um, curve that we're going to put in there. And uh, it just needs to retain the wand, so it's not like uh, it's going to have a ton of weight or anything on it. So we've got a roll here, a partial roll that I've been working on. We'll just get that traced out and cut out. I really like to stay away from these edges. Um, right along the edges of the, of the leather here, you have to watch out. There's places where um, the leather is just not appropriate to use. It, it, it's going to be waste because this is, this is not pre-trimmed or anything. So this is the, you know, the edge of the tanning and it, a lot of times it's got um, the back of it's bad or around the edges when you cut it off of a, uh, a rounded shape, you know, the animal's rounded shape and then you're making it flat. Um, there's a lot of distortion that can happen around these edges too and it, the leather will stretch funny and do weird things. So um, you just kind of have to make an assessment on that um, as you're working. Find the best, best place to get your cut with the least amount of waste. And I think I'm going to do this one right here. Okay, so this is a stitching groover, and it's got a little guide here on the edge that lets you run around uh, evenly all the way around to put a put a line. Um, normally, this is what you would do for um, if you're you know doing um, stitching and stuff. You put a groove down there, and then that lets the um, thread sit below the surface of leather to prevent wear, so it doesn't you know tear the stitching up over time. Um, but I find that just having that nice little trim line around it gives a lot of things a, a really nice um, finish look to them. The trick is when you have a complicated piece like this, you don't want to overshoot. And so what I do is I actually push it backwards to just kind of put an indention into the leather. And that lets me know where to start and start, stop with my cut. So I'll kind of start it generally and then stop right before. You probably can't see on the video because it's just a very light line impression there. But then that gives me a place to 
start and stop at so that I don't go off the edge or have lines that don't connect up as I go around a corner. So that looks pretty good. And now I'll go the right way and actually cut into the leather. All right, so that is now ready to shave. Uh, one other thing that I do with these is I, I like to put a decorative line down the edges here with the roller stamp. And let's see, I think for this one, uh, let's go with this nice little Celtic knot. Now, for doing any kind of tooling and stuff, having a granite piece of granite is great. Um, they sell them and stuff online, but honestly, if you live anywhere near um, a, even a medium-sized town, if there is a place that does granite countertops in your area, you can usually get these scraps for free if you're not worried about, you know, some of these broken edges. Um, I actually do have some uh, stone working tools that I, I can come in here and, you know, kind of round this off and smooth it up. But for doing just this part, if you're not setting rivets or anything, you're not going to have a bunch of rubbing on the corners. It's just really not that big a deal. So now we got to get some water on the leather so that we can get this tooled. I've got a handy spray bottle here for that. I'll just spray the leather down with water on the tooling surface. Let it sit for just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and get this a little bit damp to start. Let the water start working in. I'm gonna hit this one more time so it gets a nice even coat. All right, now we got a good solid surface to work on. And these are kind of a pain to use, but I usually put my weight on it like this and then just follow the edge of the leather down. All right, so we got some nice lines in there. some rivets to hold leather in place while it dries and this is getting supple but I want to get just a little more now that it's damp but it's not soaking wet that's feeling pretty good so what I like to do here is I'll use the same rivets that I'm actually going to set but I'm not going to set them I'm just going to use it to hold the leather in place while it dries and that way when it dries it'll, it'll keep its shape I can take it back off here and do all the dye and paint and stuff on it that's looking pretty good there and then for this find that a nice sharpie works really well for getting this nice and round and shaping it to the shape that it needs to be. And that way I can work that corner right along the rivets and get a nice side crease there. But then come in and keep this nice and round and then this tip curves just a little bit so I can go almost all the way in and then just kind of lightly bring the point of this down so it's not sticking out. And that adds a little friction to the wand there. 
And then right here on this edge, I always like to flare this out. And I've got a nice edge slicker for that. And then I can come in here, it's flared, and just, you know, work this to be more of a funnel shape. That makes it a lot easier to get the wand on there if you, if you kind of hit the edge of it, then it guides it into the holster. And then once I get it flared out, I come back in with the Sharpie and make sure that it's still nice and round. And that's looking pretty good. So the only other thing that I do now, while it's still slightly damp, is just get this belt loop here. In place, give it a bend. That way that I know, because this leather stretches and pulls right here around this curve, and that way I know that it's gonna get a nice even coat of dye if it's already pre-shaped. So, all right, so that is ready to dry, and once it's dry, we'll go to dye. All right, so we got everything dry, and we're in the spray booth now, and I uh, hope there's uh, enough room for <clears throat> to see this. And uh, I'm about to turn the ventilation fans on and put my mask on so I won't be able to talk and uh, the sound won't be very good. But um, I do spray all my dye. Um, I've got an airbrush that I run that. I find that it gives me a more even coat um, so I can get a, you know, a nice even color all the way down without any splotchiness or anything. And I can control the thickness of it as well. Um, so I don't, don't normally show everybody the dye process. There's not a lot of room in here and it's kind of noisy, but you know, we'll give it a shot and see how you like it. Yeah, that's the main uh, that's the main die, and now what we have to do is uh, buff it, and then uh, I'll do the edging and stuff, and we'll show you that in just a minute. So the die actually goes pretty quick, and then we have to come in on this one and uh, uh, put a gold uh, trim on the outside uh, for this order. So, all right, and this is my buffing setup that I've got. Uh, these are just uh, car buffers that go there. They have a uh, setup for to go in on a drill. Um, these work really good to buff the leather before I put the clear coat on. And uh, I have um, several different ones depending on which color. This is, you know, I use this for black. If I were to buff the purple with the, you know, the black, then the excess uh, dye that comes off on this would stain this. So I try to have a different one for the different colors. Uh, that way I can try to keep the color as pure as possible on it. So really simple uh, process on this. You turn it on and you buff it. So you get that plugged in. Turn my heater off. That's pretty much it. Once you got the, the excess uh, dye off there, it'll get kind of a sheen to it. Uh, now this is ready for uh, the paint on this one and then clear coat for them. So we'll, we'll head back to the dye booth. All right, so uh, I've got my uh, gold uh, paint set up in the airbrush. And this is a high pigment uh, metallic paint. 
and uh, it's made specifically for airbrushing. Uh, the metallics though uh, do try to clog up the nozzle. That's one of the most difficult things about dealing with the airbrushes. It's really important to clean, keep it really clean all the time. So uh, fortunately we just had the one small piece to do. Um, the downside of that is it probably takes twice as long to clean up uh, the airbrush and clean it, take it apart and clean it properly as so it does to actually do the painting and dyeing. So. All right, that's that. Uh, now I'm gonna clean up the airbrush and then when I come back, we'll uh, put a quick clear coat on these and they cure overnight and be ready to assemble tomorrow. Okay, we're all set up for our clear coat. Uh, I use uh, Phoebe's Leather Sheen on this. Uh, it's just gonna be a nice little flexible wax finish on the end. It's gonna help um, keep the dye from bleeding on things. Uh, anything that's hand dyed can always you know, bleed if it gets wet, uh, you know, stain your clothes and stuff. Um, I've, had, I've had really good luck with this. That's one of the other reasons I spray the dye is I don't have a lot of excess dye in here. So you're much less likely to get any rub off or bleeding or anything. But um, this is going to help protect that, uh, that final finish as well. So I'm definitely going to wear my mask with this. The, the paint was such a small amount and, you know, it's not toxic or anything. So no big deal. But um, this, you get a lot of this in here real fast. So uh, I'll be putting my mask on for it. All right, that's pretty much it. Uh, this will cure overnight, and then tomorrow we'll come in and uh, uh, start the assembly and burnish these edges and get those nice and smooth. And once that's done, it'll be ready to go out. All right, so everything is dry and ready to assemble. So we're gonna put uh, this together now. All right, so the one last thing that I want to do before I fold this over is I want to take this over to the burnishing wheel and then get a nice smooth finish on this edge. All right, so this is my uh, one of my edge burnishers I've got set up. This is just a uh, felt pad uh, uh, wheel here, also set up to go with a little drill adjust, uh, uh, attachment here. Um, and then what I've done is I've melted and um, impregnated this with beeswax so now I can burnish my edges with this and I just turn this on and load up a little beeswax with it, you know, every so often. And then uh, that makes it uh, really quick and easy to burnish these now. All right, nice smooth edges, good to go. All right, almost finished. Two more rivets and uh, this will be ready to ship. All right, and that's the finished product. So I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit about uh, how I uh, make these and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, and comment let me know what you think.